line interpretation of the poem. So Kitanjali 35, where the mind is without fear, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. And then it goes on, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. So these are the 11 lines. Okay, now we will see the meaning. That is, the poet prays to the Almighty that his countrymen should be free from any fear of oppression or forced compulsion. As we know that this poem was written back in the days of nationalist movement and India was actually uh, was under the oppression of colonization by the British. So, uh, he was a part of, Tagore was a part of nationalist movement and he had a great, uh, he, 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 he was a great supporter of nationalist movement. So he wrote, the, uh, under that circumstance, he wrote this particular poem. That is, he wanted, he, uh, he dreamed about a particular land, a place where there is, the, where the mind is completely free. And then lots of things are there. He is praying. It's kind of prayer. As it is known as Indian prayer, we know that this is a kind of offering, this kind of prayer to the Almighty. The poet prays to the Almighty that his countrymen should be free from any fear of oppression or forced compulsion. He wishes that everyone his, in his country has his head held high in dignity because as we are under the oppression, suppression of the British, we, uh, we were treated with, uh, we, we are treated like, we were treated like slaves. So, he wanted a land where every person, every individual are free of oppression or forced compulsion and they, these people, uh, people have their head held high in dignity. Okay. According to him, in a truly free country, every person should be fearless and should have a sense of self-dignity. The poet dreams of a nation where knowledge would be free, irrespective of class, creed, etc. So even though we may find it as a very simple sentence, that is, where the knowledge is free, actually uh, when we contextualize this particular poem, we can understand that during those days, education were uh, confined to a very small group of people, for upper class people. As we, uh, we we know that, so he says that because of the colonization and because of all the other superstitions and caste system, the problems within our country itself that we face a lot of trouble. So he, the poet, poet dreams of a nation where knowledge would be free, irrespective of class, creed, etc. Now the poet emphasizes the unity of not only of his countrymen but also of the entire world. He thinks there should be no division among people based on their caste, creed, color, religion or any baseless superstition. As, as we know that super, we, we Indians were famous and still are famous for superstitions. Okay, so the poet dreams of a new world that is free from all these kind of troubles. Now their words should come out from the depth of their hearts. And it should be very true in nature. The poet wants everyone to work hard to reach their goal and in the long run to reach perfection. So, where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection. Okay. And now, the poet says people's thoughts should be monitored by rational thinking, not by superstitions. Okay. Logic should rule over all baseless beliefs. He wishes his countrymen to be progressive and broad minded. That is where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit. So, superstitions, that is what he mentions here. The, uh, the deep-rooted caste system, the deep-rooted class system, uh, that is, that makes all these, um, you know, issues in our society. So, the poet is trying to address this issue. Okay, now... He wants that their minds are led forward to ever widening thought and action by the Almighty. Okay, by the God. People should be open minded and do something unusual or extra extraordinary, overcoming the narrowness of the mind. Okay, now the poet addresses the God as Father. 
So here the father is God. He asked him to awaken his country into such a heaven of freedom where the above conditions meet. A very um, uh, straightforward prayer to the God. Okay. So the, these are the uh, these are the line by line meaning of this particular poem. I hope you.